uh, our subject matter, of course, was uh, we were taking a look at embracing the kingdom movement despite the storms, the opposition, and the enemy. And we said storms will arise. It is normal for a storm to come. That's not because we've done something wrong. That's not because, oh, well, we must not be in the will of God. All of those things that we used to think has nothing to do with the storm. The storm comes and it's going to generally reveal how we really feel. Because when we're walking on the shore, if you will, and the sun is out, Everybody can say anything. But in the midst of the storm, what's really on your mind? We also concluded that a storm can alter my course, but my not, not my destination. Amen? And secondly, we talked about opposition. We talked about that hostile contrary action or condition the things that we've maybe been dealing with consistently they're happening in our lives it doesn't seem to want to go away doesn't want to fade out doesn't want to stop even when we're doing the quote unquote things that we know to do this opposition is there it's our opposite position it's that thing that's constantly facing us it's the thing that's standing in between us uh trying to to uh, oppose us, if you will. So we were talking about opposition. And, you know, one of the things that we looked at in opposition is sometimes you wonder, God, what's, what's, what's going on? I'm doing right. Why, why ain't this? You know I, don't know, I don't know about you, but I used to think this, you know, just because you pray about something, it's going to immediately stop. Let me see if I give you any Bible. The Apostle Paul said, I sought the Lord thrice, three times. Oh, I didn't just go to God once. I, I went back the second time. And then I went the third time. And on the third time is when he found out something. That God says, my grace is sufficient. Because The reason you look at this, see, God's grace is sufficient, you all, because just because you're dealing with opposition, it cannot stop you. It only can influence you to quit. Because greater is he that's within us than he that's within the world. So because you're facing opposition, maybe it's in your body, maybe it's on your job, maybe it's your coworker, maybe it's your family. Just because you're facing that, don't quit. Because the greater one is on, inside, is on the inside of you. Now, y'all ready for the next? That's my, that's, that's my review of the two. You, you, if you weren't here, you're just going to have to, you, yeah, you, you get it online, a CD or something. Because I really want to go into the third one here this evening. Um, I'm not going to be able to do this. I thought I was going to be able to do my jacket. First lady. Amen. Much better. Now, opposition can't stop you. Hallelujah. <laughs> that, was my, that was my note. It's popped up right there. I'm serious. Number three, I want to talk about the enemy. Now, those of you all that know me, I don't do devil talk. If you think back over the 13 years you've been here, you don't hear me preach and talking about what the enemy's doing and all of this. He don't get the credit. I ain't got time to address him and his concerns like that. I'm not one of the folk that's running and looking for a devil under every rock, and we can't help. Oh, the, my tire flat, that's the devil. Oh, my alarm clock didn't go off, that's the devil. All of this credit that we give to somebody who's defeated. So that's not me. 
nor am I about to do that this evening. But I am serving you notice that I'm going to give some discussion to the fact that we do have an enemy. I'm, I don't want us to be ignorant, the Bible says, of the enemy's devices. Or the devil's devices. We understand that there is someone who is working against us. Now, an enemy, someone who hates another, someone who attacks or tries to harm another. I do believe that we have a spiritual being who fits that category. Someone that hates us. And I don't think that people understand that about the enemy, that he hates you. I think that we think that the enemy sometimes is offering us something and because we earnestly desire what's being offered, we don't think that the person that's offering it hates us. For instance, if your greatest physical enemy was offering you something to drink, and it was hot and thirsty, you, you mean you was a hot day and you were thirsty, but it is your absolute physical enemy that's offering you something. As thirsty as you are, you would be suspect. You would be, mm, nah, I'm good. But see, we don't understand that when it comes to sin. We don't understand that behind that is something that's going to snare you, something that's going to trap us, that he actually has a long-term plan to do you in. So I want to just discuss some things because I want us to know how to embrace this uh, kingdom movement completely, even in the face of an enemy, so that we know how to deal with this. That's my premise or my perspective in dealing with this. It's not to bring attention or the glory to, quote, unquote, the devil, okay? Because um, he don't get none. That's what's wrong now. He tried to get it. Tried to take what don't belong to him. Now, Exodus chapter 15, verse 9. Now, I'm going to use the term enemy. Uh, and I want it to become synonymous with, remember the definition is someone who hates another. It's someone who attacks or tries to harm another. But I don't want you to look at people. I know on your job we talked about the opposition and you see this person and that. I don't want you to see them. I want you to see the enemy behind them. Because sometimes people are being used by the enemy. Well, let, let me remind you, there was a day you were being used by the enemy. I, I know you look good now. I know things, you, you know, you on the Lord's side now. But there was a time that each one of us was being used by the enemy. So I don't want you to look at, per se, the people that may come to mind when I share some of this. But I wanted to, to by the Spirit of God, to provoke you to see beyond that, to begin to see in the spirit what's happening. Because if you repent it, who's to say they couldn't? Exodus 15 and 9. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil. My lust shall be satisfied upon them. I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them. Now, sometimes we need to understand the mindset behind the enemy. I think Exodus 15 and 9 lends us some insight into how the enemy is looking. He's pursuing. He wants to overtake. He wants to divide your stuff. He wants to split your stuff up, take it away from you. He wants his lust or his desire to be accomplished on you. And his desire, this ain't lust like he's sexually after you. This is a down, deep desire on the inside of the enemy to absolutely destroy the people of God. This is his mindset. This, this, this is what his motivation is. This is what's behind him doing 
what he's doing. He will draw his sword. It's action. He is war. This ain't no game. And until you understand that, you 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 subject to being caught up in stuff that you don't have no business in. He playing for keeps, and you think you're getting over. I think about some of these people who are who have given themselves to doctrines of demons, as the Bible says. They're practicing witchcraft and all of these arts and stuff, not knowing that this enemy is playing for keeps. He ain't ever letting, looking at letting you go. You, you getting a little feel of something and you think it's power. Not knowing you ensnared. And saying to God, I'm going to just share this as I keep going. You're going to begin to see more of the supernatural than you have ever seen in your life. Now, you know, this ain't to scare you and all of that kind of stuff, because hopefully when we finish, you'll understand where we're at. But it's because people are desiring this. They're aligning themselves with the will of the enemy. They're opening doors in their lives. They're letting stuff take place. And he is looking for an opportunity to manifest in the earth. So he needs people. So if we see that in Exodus chapter 15 and 9, and we say, well, Pastor, you know, they, they really didn't talk about the devil in the Old Testament. This is just an enemy. It was man or whatever. So let's go to John 10 and 10. Very familiar passage of Scripture. And I do believe, you know, Jesus know about who the enemy is and what he wants. So the one who hates another, the one who tries to harm another, the one who attacks John 10 and 10 says it this way. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Jesus says, I'm coming. They might have life and that they, have, they might have it more abundantly. So Jesus wants us to have an abundant life. The enemy wants to come and kill, steal, steal kill, and destroy. Okay. Let's step down a little bit into this. According to the text, the thief or the enemy comes but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. The enemy or enemies want to steal your stuff. Let me say it again. The enemy or the enemies want to steal your stuff. Before I step into all of this, no thief breaks into anybody's house that don't have anything. The enemy wants to steal your stuff. This Jesus is telling me, he is telling us why the enemy or the thief comes. So if the thief is coming to steal, it must be because somebody has something. You with me? Okay. He is not coming to steal your car. He is not coming to steal your money. He is not coming to steal your job. He is not coming to steal your spouse. But he's coming to steal your stuff. The higher your attention. Maybe a little bit. Let's give us a little text, see if we can find it here. So what in the world is he coming to steal considering I have some stuff? It ain't my money. I don't work hard for that. It ain't my car. I like that car. It ain't my job. He can really have that anyway. That's what some of us are saying. We wouldn't care nothing about no job. Romans chapter 14, verse 17. What? Is he coming to steal? 
For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. The enemy or the enemies that we are dealing with, they are trying to steal joy. Your joy. All right. Go to Nehemiah 8 and 10. Then he said unto them, go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So if he can steal your joy, he gets your strength. And if you faint in the day of adversity, then your strength is small. See, this enemy is not after the things that we even think are valuable. He wants your joy. Watch the saints. When they begin to be dealing with situations and circumstances, if they don't lift their hands like they used to, if they can't praise God like they used to because they're mad, they're offended, something don't happen to them. See, now he's tapping into your strength because the joy of the Lord is your strength. We like to say the scripture. No, I want you to see the scripture. He's after your strength because if he takes the joy then the strength is attached to it because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Well, Pastor, you, you said he's trying to take my joy. Well, that ain't all. <laughs> he says, back to Romans 14 and 17, the kingdom of God is not food and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So see, he's also trying to steal, Minister Plummer, your peace. That's why, you know, we, we don't like to say it, but people used to testify the real way when they would say, I almost lost my mind. What they were saying was it was the peace that was being dealt with. It was my wholeness. It was all of who I was. There was. I was going through something so severe. It was affecting me wholly. All right. That, that, okay, no problem. Minister Hall, Jesus says it this way. My peace I give unto you. So what that enemy is after is the peace or the wholeness Jesus gave unto us. See, I, I was going to get him a piece of my mind. So how many pieces you got left? <laughs> See, Jesus gave us wholeness. Minister Plummer was, was, was ministering one time, and he said it this way, that when, that, that when it was the nine lepers, he says, nine, when it was ten of them, nine of them got healed. One was whole. <laughs> see it's the peace it's the wholeness see there's a wholeness that Christ has given us there's a peace it's his peace and the world can't take it away that's what we like to say but I'm telling you what the enemy comes to steal now Mm -mm. Oof. he comes to steal he also comes to kill let, let, let me help you oh, he tried to kill me wait 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 a minute okay girl I got in the car and the enemy trying to kill me we 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 gonna we we gonna talk a little bit so we can understand some things. We gonna understand some things. Now, it says 
the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness or God's right way of doing things. So he's trying to kill your ability to do things God's right way. Where you no longer look at God's right way of doing things, you just want to get it done. Don't matter if it's the right way. See, it, it, it's, it's like sex is a beautiful thing until you decide to do it and it's not God's right way. It don't matter if you could say something like, well, we get married in a few months. Because now the problem is it's not God's right way. So he's trying to kill. See, no, no. It ain't, we think of killing as, oh, you graveyard dead. No, 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 no. It actually has to do with, to, 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 uh, particularly the word destroy, steal, kill, and destroy. It has to do with render useless. He's trying to render useless your way of doing, uh, your, God's way of doing things or God's right way of doing things. So he wants to render it useless in your life. I don't believe in that no more. I ain't going to do it like that. It don't matter what God said. So now it's being rendered useless in your life. This is what these enemies are after. See, that's why I said we, we, these ain't about people. This, this ain't about looking at nobody and they looking all cross-eyed and they look a little strange. So you say, well, that's got to be the enemy. No, 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 no. We talking about your real enemy. The real one. The enemy of your soul. Y'all okay? I, I'm not, I'm not going to hold you too long. There's some things that we need to understand, though. Since people love to talk about what the enemy doing and all of this kind of stuff. Let's put all of this in context so when we walk up out of here, we understand some stuff. Here you go. Enemies have limited authority and they need permission. I'm not biting my tongue. I want to be very clear. These enemies have limited authority and they need permission. Boy, oh boy. Okay. Go with me to uh, Job chapter 1, verse 10, New Living Translation. So the enemy is having a discussion with God. He couldn't even initiate the discussion. God talks to him first. In the course of the discussion, the enemy says to God, you have always put a wall of protection around him, him being Job, and his home and his property. Hello, anybody home? God, I just pray a hedge of protection around me and my, here's, this, you know this is what you're praying from, right? You, you know this, right? Just giving you the text of what you pray. He says, you have made him prosper in everything he does. When we get this, when we get an understanding that the one who causes you to prosper is God, then prosperity is not a problem. It's the fact that we stuck on thinking that we making it. He said, look how rich he is. Verse 11, but stretch out and take away everything he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. Verse 12, God says, all right. You may test him. Okay, wait, wait. Look, let's, let's, can we go back to verse 11 for a minute? Matter of fact, can we go back to all the other verses before that? Because verse 12 is where you got permission. In other words, I don't care what you're thinking. I don't care what's in your mind to do to him. Let's, let's do it like I don't care what's in the enemy's mind to do to you. Until you get permission he got permission because Job could handle it what do you mean pastor Job must have been a mighty man no 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 see we let's quit tripping let's see let's quit tripping on us
The reason Job could handle it is because God said this, have you considered my servant Job? And then he starts to describe Job. Anything God says is what it says, is what he says. So if the enemy gets permission in your life, it's because God gave him permission because you can handle it because he already said you can. I don't care how it look. I don't care how you feel. I don't care what everybody else is saying about the situation. This enemy had to get permission. He has limited authority because he had to get permission. He didn't just bust up in here and do what he want to do in your life, tearing all this stuff all up. No, God already spoke over you and said you can handle it. I'm gonna let him do. I'm, I'm gonna let him do this right here. Ain't you ever seen people and you go? Now see, we we say this, man. Just like seeing like they just got a grace on their life to deal with that. How is it? How they do? God already said it. Just because we weren't in the conversation, we wouldn't know this unless God pulled back the scriptures of eternity and opened it up and said, let me show you what I said about Job, even though he didn't know what was happening in the conversation. The enemy has limited authority, and he has to get permission. So I understand. Oh, you no, no, you understand what I went through to get this message. You understand. You understand when I walked in here this morning, what the climate or the atmosphere was really like. And when I'm telling the saints to pray, I was serious. Because now you start to pull back the covers. And you see stuff that the natural eye don't see. So he says in verse 12, all right, you may test him, the Lord said to Satan. Do whatever you want with everything he possesses, but don't harm him physically. Now, this is the first, this, you know, this is the first time when he get to get, get, all, get rid of all this stuff, and you know he's going to come back again. But then, do you, you, you know what? He come back again and said, God said, okay, we're fine. You can touch him, but you just can't take his life. Excuse me? You, you mean your authority is still limited? You mean even on the second go round, you still got to get permission? You thought the first one would take me out, although God said it wouldn't. So now you come back again and you still got to get permission. And you said, oh, we, we, you know, we say stuff like, the Lord won't put on you no more than you can bear. You're right. You are absolutely right. He already said you could handle it from all eternity. He spoke it into existence, and now he's giving permission to fulfill it. And we running around here with our head down. Oh, God, oh, God. Straighten yourself up. Take it all. This is all you got. This is all you got. I was created for this moment. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. See, it ain't me. It's to bring my God glory. I was created for this moment. To see a fallen creature like me be endowed with the ability of God to stand under the pressure of the enemy. Oh, yeah, I was created for this moment. So you could see God's glory shine all in me. Oh, yeah, I was created for this moment. It may look hard. It may look, I, I may be seemingly bowing under the pressure of the moment. But just wait. Just wait. See, you, that enemy, he knows he has limited authority, and he had to get permission. We tend to get, well, oh, 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 well, oh, oh, my, I'm just going through this. and I'm, Be quiet. Be quiet. Take it. Just take it. Because you can. You can. This is why I'm here. This is what's supposed to happen. Y'all, 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 y'all stop. <laughs> Matthew chapter 28, 
verse 18. See, we don't, we don't got this thing twisted. Tired of folk talking about I'm, uh, uh, the devil chasing me. The, uh, the enemy this and he on my. Let, let, let's wait a minute. Do, do you know what? James says it this way. Humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. Resist the enemy. And he will. He ain't even sticking around. We need some resistance saints instead of some running saints. Because if he, if he behind you, chasing you, you know you're running. The scriptures don't say that. It says you can resist the devil after you've humbled yourself under the mighty hand of God. And he's going to flee. Boy, I... So Matthew 28, verse 18, Jesus came and uh, he said to his disciples, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. So, so, so all power don't belong to the enemy. It belongs to Jesus. So if Jesus, wait, wait, wait. No, so we, we have to come. I can't go on until we come to a place of common ground here. For we understand that all power belongs to Jesus. Far too long, we've talked about the power of the enemy. Let's go to the very source of all power. Let's go to the possessor of all power. Let's go to the person that the enemy has to get permission from who has all power. Let's get the whole thing in order. So Jesus has all power. Are we good? So it's given unto him in heaven and earth. We wear on the earth. So we need to be able to know who has all the power on earth. So, King Jesus has all the power. I, I, can we all come in agreement with that? Okay, since we all in agreement with that, go with me to Luke chapter 10, verse 19, King James. Behold, I give unto you power. You can't give it to me unless you got all of it. So I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over what? All the power of the enemy. Over all the power of the enemy. And, oh yeah, by any, just, just in case you, you miss something, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, that came from the person who has all power. I'm just going back to considering my source. The source of all power says, I give you power to tread upon all the power of the enemy. <laughs> Holy Spirit, help me. Psalms 41 and 11. By this I know that thou favorest me, because my enemy doth not triumph over me. This is the way I know. I know you favor me. See, you, you, you thought that good job. You don't understand. You have an enemy who have a desire. Remember, he, has, he wants his lust satisfied on you. But by this you know that God has favored you because that enemy who wants his lust satisfied in your life has not triumphed over you. The fact that you was able to get up again. I mean, you, 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 the, the thing that he was utilizing to take you out. 
Some of it, you know, sometimes, Donald, it's stuff we absolutely don't understand. Amen. Things that happen, it just seems like, oh, where is God? Where is he? I'm, I'm just feeling so abandoned. I'm feeling so just by myself now, like I'm just out here. Nobody understands. It seems like I can't hear nothing from God. And it's just, how am I going to deal with this? It was supposed to take you out. But by this, by this, that it didn't, that, that, that you, you still triumphed. By that, you know God has favored you. So listen to this. It's the favor of God that keeps you winning over the enemy. I'm just favored. It keep me winning. Do you know how frustrated you're making the enemy? You know how just frustrated he is? I tried that. It didn't work. Tried it. I mean, it, that's, I believe that's why the Bible says after you resist him, he flee. Ain't nothing working. It ain't working. Still praising. They still coming to church. They still loving folk. They still praying. No matter what I do, it's just not working. It's because you favor. You keep triumphing. Over and over and over. Well, um, mm -mm -mm. Let, let me show you something since, since you might be interested in this a little bit. Second Corinthians chapter 2. Second Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Second Corinthians 2 and 14. Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. Okay, let, let, let's, we're going to just read slow tonight. We ain't trying to, you know, you some of the people, they, they, you know, they read before you finish the stuff. You know, y'all was learning to read in first grade, in kindergarten. Y'all wanted to read in front of the teacher. Let's just slow down. Because we, we need to get this. We need to understand. Now, thanks be unto God. Why are we thanking God? He's the one who always, not sometimes, always causes us to triumph, but where? In Christ. See, this ain't about me. This ain't about you. The kingdom movement, is, it's all about the king. It's about him setting up his kingdom on the earth. This is where the triumph is taking place in Christ. Now, we read triumph, okay, and make it manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. Now, I, I want to do something here. Several months ago, we were in service, and they were having, they had blocked off the street out here, and they were having a parade. And, you know, there's been times, in times past, we've actually stood outside and we've watched the parade. Dr. Hall, the parade was actually processional. And according to the scriptures, it's really saying, now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to have a processional in Christ. The processional is actually God parading you around. He keeps saying, see what you tried. Look at that. Let me bring Dr. Hall back around again. You want, you want to see him again? Hold on, he's coming right back around. I told you the enemy is so frustrated. He is so absolute, he is absolutely angry. Because God's parading you around. It's a processional he's doing over and over. He always, are we, uh, just stay in Christ. He always, this ain't sometimes, it ain't how you feel, it's always. You're always part of the procession. You ain't watching the parade, you in it. You in it. And the enemy got to watch it. See, we, we, the, 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 we ain't understood. This enemy 
He has limited authority. Okay. I said we weren't going to be here long. Romans 8 and 37. 37, 38, and 39, and I think I'm going to maybe let you roll with that one. Now, I want to show you something right quick. <laughs> okay. Nay, in all these things, we are, you're not even a conqueror. See, here's the reality. Not the, st the reality is not, okay, listen, we have a thing right now called VR or virtual reality. It's not the reality, it's virtual. Okay, it, it's not the real thing, it's something people have been able to produce. What I'm saying according to the scriptures, nay, in all these things, we are. In other words, the real reality is you are more than a conqueror. I don't care what the VR look like. This is just the VR. Somebody going to unplug it eventually. Because in the real, for lack of a better way, in the real world, you more than a conqueror. Through him that loved us. Verse 38, for I'm persuaded. Paul said, listen, I am persuaded. I'm convinced my mind is made up. Neither death, wait a minute, I thought death was the enemy. Did you hear that? Boy, see, that's why I wanted you to understand, we have enemies Because man was intended to live forever. For I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels. Wait a minute. We, we need to go slow on these because neither death. So see, we, we, we tend to think that death is the end. It's not. Absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. If the worst thing you can do is kill a believer, all you've really done is put them in the presence of God. That's it. That's where we ended up. I, I mean, come on. Neither death nor life. I don't care what folks are able to bring to life now. Oh, some some of you all you you not you not looking at the news you not see you remember when I, when I talk well, well some of y'all weren't there but you know we we done a little segment talking about some things that's a little different than what everybody's talking about now but they're trying they they sixty minutes done a special on a gentleman who is trying to bring back the mastodon. If you don't know what the Macedon is, it's the woolly mammoth. So they're trying to get back pre a prehistoric animal. They're trying to bring it back by using the DNA and fusing it basically with elephants. Now, I don't care what new life they try to bring. It still, it still doesn't change my persuasion. See, we need to lock in. There's new, listen, you all, it's not going to be some scientific discovery that's not covered in the scriptures. It may be new to the men who are here now, but it's not going to be new to the scriptures. Paul is letting us know. He says, whether it's death, whether it's life. Now watch this, whether it's angels. You got folks talking about some angel came and told them this. I don't care what the angel said. If it don't line up with the scriptures, that angel will be, he's going to hellfire anyway. No matter what he said. Nor principalities. These things just ruling over places. 
There are principalities, absolutely. They're ruling over territories. You go in a place and it feels different because they're ruling over it. But that, that's, I'm still persuaded. Even though it looked like you're by yourself, having to deal with all of this stuff. Still persuaded. No powers. I don't care what this is. Some authority that's in this place and it's, it's don't set up and it looks like it's running everything. Look like it ain't going to never, never change. Like it ain't going to ever be a breakthrough. I don't care. I'm still persuaded. No things present. We got to deal with some stuff in our lifetime, but it's some other stuff that's coming. Some other stuff that's coming in the future. Some crazy stuff. Verse 39. No height, no depth. You know, people want to get the deep revelations. Well, I feel as though, okay, that's fine. I'm still persuaded. No, any other creature. I don't care if they find Bigfoot or not. It don't matter. The Loch Ness, I don't care. Bigfoot, Loch Ness, all of them stand together. It don't matter. I'm still persuaded. And y'all, I'm telling you, I don't know. You know, folks run around, I don't know what's under the water. You don't either. 70% of the earth is covered in water. Hello? Still some places in the woods I ain't wanting to go. I don't know what's out there and don't care. It doesn't change my persuasion is what I'm saying. Some of us, we're sitting on the edge of our seat like it's going to be something new and it's going to be unveiled. It ain't going to shake the scriptures. That's what I'm telling you. Doesn't matter. You turn around and they're like, oh, look at this. This is a new secret code written in the Bible. Only a few people know. Don't even waste your time. It's always something. See, Paul was saying, I'm persuaded, you all. I'm persuaded. I don't care what it is. I don't care what's coming. I don't care what they've told you. I don't care what they create. He says, no height, no depth, no any other creature. I don't care what they even design. Don't matter. I, well, I mean, and just, just bear with me for a moment. This is just for illustration. I... I've always, when I was a kid, Sharon, I was growing up, I used to like comic books. I mean, you know, everybody, everybody was Superman, you know, faster than the speeding bullet, you know, uh, able to leap tall buildings, you know, you know, able to stop a locomotive, you know, all, all of that stuff. Only problem is kryptonite, you know. All of that, it was, it was cool. Spider-Man does whatever a spider can, you know. <laughs> all of that stuff. I mean, loved it. Watch this. One of the interesting, if I say this now, everybody's going to go home and watch this now. <laughs> One of the interesting characters in comic books, and I didn't like him growing up, but I see some stuff now that I see that I didn't notice before. It's Captain America. Captain America originated from a super soldier program. But watch this. I'm going to show you how they're showing you stuff and they're showing it right in our face. It's a super soldier program and America ain't the ones who invented it. It was the Germans. And Captain America crashes in Antarctica. Where are they doing all of these new discoveries at right now? Where is all of this activity going on now? You go to Google Earth and look and see all of the stuff that's being found in Antarctica, structures and all of these things, because the Nazis was there in the 40s. And when you, when you MK Ultra program, when you go back and realize that the CIA had it in the 50s. In the 50s, mind control. This is all programs. But Paul said, listen, I'm persuaded. See, this ain't new, you all. It's not new. Paul was saying, I see this coming. And it still ain't going to matter. See, that's what we got to get. 
that's what we call because they're they gonna break it. They're gonna break it. Headline news, breaking news. You gotta see, and they're gonna act like it's some brand new. But you still gotta be persuaded. It doesn't change the scriptures. You still on rock solid ground with the scriptures. No matter what new program they've come out with, because it's really not new. Okay. So, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Can nothing separate me from God's love. There is no enemy capable of separating you from God's love. Let, 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 me, let me close with this. Now, I, I share it with you because the thing that I want you, remember we talked about uh, storms? The storms can alter your course, but not your destination. Opposition can't stop you, can only influence you to stop. The enemies have a limited authority. And they have to have permission. If I was going to do a subset, if I was just going to toss another little thing with you, go to Revelation 12. And 12. See, these enemies can. Watch this. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. This is right when Satan get kicked out. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath. I told you he is mad. He is absolutely mad because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. If I could give you any other little thing, the enemy is time sensitive. He's time sensitive. That's why I believe the scripture says, also in James, when he says this, when he says resist the enemy and he will flee because he ain't got much time. See, you, you can actually... Wait him out. <laughs> By reason, he ain't, no, no, he can't be everywhere at one time. You can resist him and he'll flee when we've submitted ourselves unto God. See, that's why we have to understand. We win this thing. Every way you look at it, we win. The enemy is time since he can't. He, he knows he has a short time. <coughs> Just remind him. You know you ain't got long, right? You, you, you really want to waste all your time here? See, I, there are people talking about them rebuking the devil and all of that. I don't see that in Scripture. I don't. Not for me. Michael the archangel said, the Lord rebuke you. All I see that I'm supposed to submit myself to God, I'm going to humble myself under his mighty hand, and I'm going to resist the enemy. After that, he flees. We ain't got to have no conversation. I'm not talking about demons. He got a short time. He got a long way to go and a short time to get there. I'm finished. <laughs> 